Hello everyone, welcome back to the BlackLotusGo.com video series. Um, today we're playing another standard deck on Magic Arena with Boros Tokens. Um, this deck is exciting to me, mostly because of Heroic Reinforcements. And it turns out it's also a very good Venerated Loxodon deck. Um, also, History of Benalia is just one of the strongest cards in standard, so we're aiming to abuse it. Um, I think the one drops, uh, there's a few options, but these three have been good. Uh, I still think maybe one of them should be knights, like the 2-1 knight, um, Dauntless Bodyguard. But so far these three cards have been good. Legion's Landing is obviously great when you can transform it. Um, the flying 2-1 has been very good, and maybe flying is just what this deck needs to get the reach in. Um, two drops you have Goblin Instigator, um, the best token maker in this colors, and a knight. And then Legion War Boss is very powerful in this deck because uh, just getting the tokens each turn is pretty powerful. But if you can ever mentor it, attack with it and mentor it, and keep it alive with something like Integrity, um, you're probably way ahead. Um, the sideboard has like cards that shut down explore creatures. Um, yeah, just like a mix of value cards. Um, so I'm going to rejoin a queue. I had some technical difficulties previously. Um, so I restarted this video, but I already have three games uh, played and three games won, and so now I have a little bit of experience with the deck. So we'll see if I can, uh, I've made some play mistakes, but this deck has still carried us to victory. So we'll see if it keeps going. Um, if you ever can curve out into heroic reinforcements, it seems like you win the game on the spot. Um, I've had a lot of, uh... Awkward games where it takes forever and then you still win the game on the spot when you play it. Because um, it does have a relatively low land count, so you can't rely on it. Um, double History of Benali Hand is always what you're hoping for, especially on the play. This hand is great. Um, we're just going to have a ton of damage from Knights. If we happen to draw a Knight of Grace anytime by turn 5, then it's incredible at damage output. Um, or so anything like a Venerated Loxodon will be good. Um, we're not going to block, um, our tokens are more valuable than trading for their one drop. Um, we do want to find some way of lifelink probably to race them, but since we're on the play with History of Benali, we're probably in great shape. Um, yeah, they didn't attack, so we'll just, uh, keep curving. Um, we can definitely Conclave Tribunal, like, a Rekindling Phoenix or an Experimental Frenzy if we have to. Um... It's possible they'll just chain whirler our tokens away, but that's not a big deal. It's a bigger deal that they'll have a 3-3 first strike and play. Um, so maybe that's what we'll end up playing Tribunal on. Um, we're fine with Shock. And it's a card for a third of a card, basically. Um, this game will take a little longer than if they didn't have it, but... Uh, so they're just burning their hand off off our uh, random tokens, so we're fine with that. It's, in this case, it's because they wanted to get in the damage of Love Runner, but that's fine. Um, so Healer's Lock is looking good. Oh, that's a nice draw. So let's see what we can do. If we... Uh, so basically we have 6 mana in play, Healer's Lock is free, History of Benali is minus 2. So if we hit Rubinalia, we have four left, so we can't quite do everything, sadly. But we can play History Rubinalia, and then the following turn we can lock it on after attacking. Um, this turn we can actually Tribunal, but we don't really just care about killing a 2-2, I don't think. So, um, It's just worth noting that if we were playing against some deck that we did want to Tribunal this turn, we could, so that's pretty impressive. Um, so we have two knights that get buffed. They don't get in there for one. Um, I'd say we're looking pretty. If the Healer's Lock lives, it'll start gaining us some life. Um, the Loxodon is actually an effective blocker the turn we cast it. Steamkin we're fine with for now. Like we, The card we most feared is still Chain Whirler. Um, but after this turn, it's not as scary because we get to buff our 1 ones. Okay, so we're going to get in there for a lot. Um, I can consider. Let's just see how uh, combat goes. 
Um, it's gonna be pretty obvious when I don't attack, attack with the hawk. What's up? But what you gonna do? I'm leaning towards actually killing the steam can. Um, we don't mind that so much. Okay, so I'm gonna lock it on, buffing the whole board because I don't really care to block this turn. And then I am gonna try to on the steam can just for tempo. Um. Because they would have three attackers, and it, it gives them a lot more options with... It could just be a 4-4 four four that can attack, or it can uh, give them mana for, like, double risk factor, something weird like that. Or experimental frenzy, so... Uh, it seems like we're very far ahead by making that play, is what I'm saying. Like, now we can just attack with everything, and we don't really fear anything. Alright. Oh yeah, we have another buff. This deck is nuts. Or specifically history been all is nuts. Who knows which one? <laughs> Tiger with no fear. I don't think they have any way to win this game. We're gonna go to eighteen. Yawning at my mono red opponents playing this one out. Um, okay, so their board's gone. Our board is not gone. Loxodon is amazing in this deck. Uh, it's a 3 of in the current list. I'm thinking it maybe should be a 4 of. Um, of course, when you draw multiples, it is awkward. Yeah, so that's the one card that theoretically would get them back in the game from a value perspective, but they don't have time for that. I really do like Experimental Frenzy in the Mono Red decks. It's really fun and very powerful. But in that game, we just ran them over. Um, so I've played four games with this deck so far, and I've won four games with this deck, so I'm uh, really enjoying it. I'm going to play some uh, com competitive cues with the deck later, but I just wanted to run it through a best of one series to get a feel for the deck first. And so far it's feeling good. Um, sideboarding, I imagine you don't go too crazy, you just tweak the, uh, you just pull in the cards that are very relevant. Ah, two cliff top retreat draw. It's likely in the uh, three color decks, but when you have a two color deck, it's less good. Um, we can still play like a one drop on turn two. I don't know. The sand's not very exciting to me. Um, I'm gonna play. Like we have two shots at a land to play history banalia. I don't know. It's got, like, the three best cards in the deck and a chance to cast them. I don't know. It's probably supposed to be a mulligan. Um, we have two two draw steps to find a land. We'll make this hand really good. And if we happen to find a fourth land by turn four, then that seems pretty strong. Legion's landing. Um, Alright, so we have all three of our one drops. Which one's best to cast? I think just Legion's landing, and I'll trade. No, I'm not going to trade. I just need the bodies for the Loxodon, so I should have played the Healer's Hawk so that I can start attacking. Um, but it's it's fine. Our opponent will probably play something like a Mara or the token thing. Yep. Um, so this is a pseudo mirror match. Ah, uh, we missed. Alright. So we're just going to uh, play our creatures out, and we might attack with them kind of suicidally just to transform Legion's Landing next turn. Um... Or we can just play Venerator Loxodon, which might be better. I could see this deck playing even more than 11 one-drops. Like, they're they're very important. Like, uh, 
I don't know what she would cut because there's a lot of good cards in the deck, but uh, like maybe trim a tribunal. Um, I never played against this card. I've wanted to try it in Selesnya decks, but it's just a giant body, so. I mean, that's not bad for two mana. Alright, um, well, we can play the Loxodon this turn, so we're at least doing something powerful. Um, transforming the, the uh, Legion's Landing would be too, uh, suicidal. Um, so this way we have a flying presence, pretty good actually, and, uh, or the 4-4 can shut down the Amara to block, so they just have to Convoke to use it. Um, so I don't actually hate our spot. Um, if we ever cast these heroic reinforcements, it feels like we might win. Um, so we don't want our opponent to have something like their own Loxodon. It seems like a great card. It's just so powerful. Like, you can uh, tap out to cast your token makers and then just cast the Loxodon, so I don't know, I really like that. I'm really a fan of this deck. Alright, so we can play the History of Benali at the very least. So let's see. Um, if they march with the Multitudes now, it's for three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I just want to get the uh, flying creatures going and just attack with those. And that way we transform our Adanto so we can even hear heroic reinforcements next turn. So yeah, looking pretty good. The Aspirant has been very impressive. Um, yeah, that's it. We're not really at risk of dying. If uh, Flourish was an instant, that would be really cool with Legion's Landing. Like, you ramp to 6 mana and then buff it, but that'd be too powerful. It's just their land, and the Flourish is a random upside. So now they're at 10, and Heroic Reinforcements just kills them. So that seems good. I'm gonna work on this deck. It seems great. Alright, so uh, they're probably gonna chump attack so that they don't die, but they might not know they're dead since it's only 8 in the air right now. Um, we're currently able to produce 11 flying damage next turn. The Shauna is actually looking pretty good. Alright, so I'm just gonna um, reinforcements attack with the flyers and hope it's good enough. They could have like I don't know if they play side of the wreckage, like we're playing best of ones, so main decks can be weird. But I'm just gonna go for the kill. Um like I imagine their removal is supposed to be tribunal if they play any. But maybe they'll get us here, who knows? Alright. Yeah, so that was an impressive showing from the deck. We stumbled on mana and still with Loxon we were able to do crazy stuff with two lands in play. I'm really excited about this deck now. I've played five games with it. And they've all been victories. And pretty convincing ones. Keep drawing history of Benalia. That's the key. Alright, so we've got two lands on the draw. Um, we can definitely play spells every turn, so it seems like a keep to me. Uh, if we happen to draw a white source and a history of Benalia, this hand is nuts. Um, I like Healer Sock turn one against a mono red deck. Let's see if it lives, probably not. Um, Knight of Grace is actually a really effective blocker. Uh, I mean, it forces them to use a removal, which means they're not playing a creature. Alright, so I, I like the way this is starting. We'll see how it shapes up. Um, if they have the right cards, they could disrupt this draw, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. So the card we must fear is still Goblin Chain Whirler. Um, shock works. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So now we're taking four. So we are falling a little behind. Um, but we're not in terrible shape. The instigator is nice. Let's see here. So, 
next turn I can use the instigator and the loxodon. So this turn I'm just gonna hope Night of Grace can block. Um, all right, so they didn't have a removal spell on their turn for it, so that's something good. Well, we pretty much knew that since they played Wizard's Lightning, which is their best burn spell. Um, okay. Oh wow. Um, sadly, how does this work? All right, so it is a trigger. Let's see, how do we want to do this? So we have five mana, so all of the, uh, I'm just going to play everything. One, two, yeah. I mean, they can trade their front firebrand for this thing, but that's fine. Like, we're basically forcing them to. Loxon is so amazing. I love this card. Um, so they're gonna sack their fire. Oh, well, they can still do it now. Um, I really think they should. It's a 3 2 flyer for their 1 1. Um, so now our blocker is the Loxodon, and then we have a huge board. Um, with heroic, heroic reinforcements, it's. I mean, we'll see the power of that card. It's gonna buff our team and create 4 more power. Oof. Imagine if I had the mana to cast both of those. Um. I'm just gonna try and kill them. Let's see how much damage we can do. Six attackers. Five, eight, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, nineteen. <laughs> We're presenting lethal. It's pretty cool. They have to block. Um they don't really have any good blocks either. Wow, that was a good turn. Um yeah, looks like we're gonna be six and all. Alright, I'm still excited about this deck, and I think you can see why. Um, in the in the matches, in the two games that, or three games that didn't get recorded for this video, um, the toughest one was against Golgari midrange. Part of it was because I misplayed and let them get an extra Izoni trigger with Conclave Tribunal. Um, so I, I want to test that matchup some more. I think a lot of the sideboard cards are for that deck, uh, the Tukratli Honor Guards. It shuts down like all the Explore creatures, the Golgari Fine Broker, uh, I guess even like Chupacabra. So basically everything in their deck becomes vanilla creatures. It's pretty good. Um, so that's why there's three copies of that in the sideboard. Alright, so we have Legion's Landing into nothing, into History Banalia. Sand's not that exciting, but it does have History Banalia, so it's like definitely a good hand. It's just not one of our nut draws, since we don't have a two. To uh, turn 2 play. Alright, so Lanowar Elf on the play is what we're scared of in this matchup. Um, Intervention is uh, really expensive. I haven't cast Integrity yet. Those I could see trimming it to one copy. There's two in the deck right now. It's like a... I mean, this is the draw where we'll see if it's good. Um, because... The idea is to play it on Legion War Boss to get an extra mentor and token trigger. Um, but that, and I mean, just a random combat trick can be good in a deck like this. Um, but I could see it just being more one drops because that's all this deck really wants, right? So I think in my next build of this deck, I'll actually cut the integrities for the one mana knight. Um, it looks like we're just gonna die this game, sadly. Okay, so... Do I have time to play History of Benalia? Uh, if I take two hits from Steel Life Champion this turn... Go to five and then I still really like, can't block that well. I have to, uh, integrity, my token, trade... I don't see how else I'm getting in this game though. Uh, Lightning Helix doesn't trade well. Uh, I don't like my odds, but I think this is the highest chance. Um, we just have to gain one life off the lifelink creatures to not be exactly dead to four steel leaf hits. Um, we need to use the integrity as a pump spell so we can actually block. Oh, well. I think we're just dead now. Like, we can try being all that, but it's too much. Too fast. Um, the turn when Lenore Elves is 
pretty good when they have this kind of draw. <coughs> Worth noting if you're a budget player, the mono green deck, um, pretty easy to build. I mean, our opponent happens to have, uh, like, no hide Ferox in their deck. Alright, let's see what we can do. So we need... I think we're just dead. Like, there's no way we can deal with all three of these. Yeah, let's move on. Alright, so we picked up our first loss with the deck. Sadly, we didn't quite get to 7-0. zero. Let's see if we can do it in the next try. Yeah, I want. I think uh, the changes I want to make are adding a couple more one drops, and although that could make the deck weaker against something like Deafening Clarion, um, so I'll have to look at the sideboard plan for control matchups. Um, but I want the fourth Loxodon, I think, because it's looked really good. Like in the draws where you don't have a crazy history of Benalia start. Um, all right, we're in the draw again. We have the integrity, but. Like to me, a card. It seems like it's only good if your your game plan is working, and I want cards that you can just kind of play if you have an awkward start. Um, so we will keep this hand. No one drop. If this was a one mana creature, this hand would be way better, I think. So that's exactly what I was thinking about changing in the deck. Like basically, you just want to get bodies in place so that you can guarantee you can cast your Confoke spells. And chip away with damage and transform your legions landing, all that kind of stuff. I'm almost wondering if Fanatical Firebrand would fit in this deck because it's a creature that con kind of counts as a removal spell. Like it kills Lanomar Elves, and like that's kind of it, but that's the only thing I've been scared of, right? Well, um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna cut these integrities. Like I like the idea of them. I could also see Trimming Legion War Boss, uh, since it's only good on the play, basically. Um, like, I don't know. It's very impressive in the games where it's where you're not behind when you cast it. Okay, so. Hmm. If I cast Knight of the Grace this turn, next turn I'll, I'll be able to. I'll only have four mana, sort of. I want to get the bodies in play to give myself more options for convoking later on. How does the Legion War Boss work? It just comes into play in combat. Yeah, so we can't quite convoke with it. Um, I can see this game going either way. We definitely have options available to us. Um, if we can get off a Legion War Boss trigger, like if they attack with Wild Growth and only have like a Branch Walker that's a 2-1, we're definitely slamming War Boss. But otherwise, I have to consider Loxodon, or like Knight of Grace, leave up Integrity. All right, yeah, we're slamming the war boss here and attacking. All right, so after all that trash talking, uh, war boss is actually looking decent now. Because next turn we'll have the integrity for it. Transform the legions landing that we don't have. All right, so our opponent probably feels silly for making that attack now. Apart from know that. Okay, that's fine. Um, they use their turn for that. Go ahead. An oh wait, they didn't kill our war boss. Hmm. Okay, so. Hmm. I think this is gonna go well for us. I have so many options, and they're all good. Let's see here. I'm not gonna lock it on this turn, even though I could. If I heroic reinforcements, oh man, so many choices. Um, I think I'm gonna ignore their Vraska, 
just because it's so much health, I'd rather just kill them. So... I like the idea of leaving up uh, integrity. So I'm going to attack everything at them. And then I'm probably going to try to kill their wild growth walker with the integrity. And then it seems to me like they're dead next turn to her up reinforcements. I'm not sure if it matters which creature I mentor, but I'm just going to mentor the real creature. Um, so I imagine they block, like, they're supposed to double block the war boss, right? And then the integrity gets them. Alright, I'm just going to kill that wild growth walker. I don't need to. I can gain them life though. So they're taking five. Um, I don't know if, I don't think they play cards like mess sweepers, right? Interesting. Wow, well, uh, so how about that? I honestly didn't expect that. Um, I don't think most... I mean, there, there's supposed to be a deck full of creatures with converted mana costs or less. So it is what it is. How much is the ultimate? Nine. Alright, so if they were playing like the stock uh, Golgari midrange deck, we would have won for sure. I need to double check because I'm pretty sure they don't run that card only. I mean, we are playing a best of one queue, so people can uh, sometimes make their decks look funny. Since there's no sideboard. Yeah, people don't play Ritual of Soot anywhere in their lists normally. That's not to say you shouldn't, like, you know, come up with your own lists. Um, okay, that's a good draw. Um, so they can just ultimate Vraska. Um, so we actually. Oh wow, we can't even really play the lock zone for that reason. Uh, yeah, alright, well, sure. Probably dead. Um, yeah, so you should definitely think for yourself when you're building your deck, um, but most people are going to be playing pretty close to the stock lists, and I think uh, in a deck that is built around 1, 2, and 3 mana creatures, you don't really want a card like Ritual of Soot. Especially when Wild Growth Walker is supposed to be your anti aggro strategy. Um, but it did happen to be the perfect card for them in this game. Um, so I need two blockers. I'm going to attack them with the 2-2. Two -two. That makes sense. Oh, this is sad. Um, I'm fine being dead to any removal spell because this game is not going anywhere fast. Uh, I have to leave the card in hand, of course. It's not even that all in for them to emblem because. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna just let them kill us with the emblem because I want to see the animation, if any. 
Um, like, they don't even lose Nebraska, and, like, they're not at risk of dying. Alright, let's see what this looks like. Hopefully it's cool. No, it's just an explosion. I wish that Vraska like, shot out some tentacles or something weird like that. I don't know. Um, Alright, well, we went from 6-0 to 6-2, but... Uh, I think that last game was a little silly due to the uh, ritual sit. Um... Like, it's a card we can play around in decks we expect it from, but in a deck that's not supposed to run it, uh, it's kind of hard to do that. Alright, we've got some dorks to play, I guess, so. Nothing exciting going on yet, but keep full hand. So it's possible this deck is just very strong against everything except Deafening Clarion and Ritual of Soot. So the question would become, how do you deal with those cards, or how do you shore up those matchups? Um, so that's what I'll be thinking about as I try to either tune the deck or build the sideboard. Um, probably will leave the main deck pretty close to how it is, because you just want to get them dead. Um, let's see, so what's best with Warboss next turn? Uh, we already are going to mentor our healer's hawk, so I'll just play the knight of grace. I really want to get like a combo kill where on turn 5 I play like a 1 drop and a heroic reinforcements, and that's like 7 surprise damage, burst damage as you will. Um, hmm. Closer than it looks. I think the Knight of Grace is just too much better. Alright, so we'll get in with the token. I'm um, still looking pretty good. Uh, we probably won't be able to attack with Warboss next turn. If it's a tr if it if it can trade, we will. But if it has to jump attack, we wouldn't want to. Alright, we don't get the choice, but we still get to attack with our Knight of Grace. Um, so we're looking for any of our payoff cards, like, uh, well, there's one. So we'll probably run that next turn. So we're using four mana this turn still. Um, so they're buffing our Knight of Grace for us. Alright, so this is a turn where we just want them to not produce bodies that can block. Obviously, we don't want them to have virtual soot, but like I said before, it's not a card you really expect out of Golgari midrange. Um, they could play a card like uh, what's that black creature? Like the the mare, like the black mare that gives everything minus one minus one. That would get us really good, but it's usually a zero to one of. I want them to just like play a Doom Whisperer and say go and we win. We are blessed by the city, so how can we lose? The city wants us to win. Alright, so that's an ineffective turn for them. So most likely oh wow. Um, so they have one blocker, we're putting out 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, uh, 15 damage, so, yeah, we'll just do that probably, right? Is it better to lock it on? Probably not. Um, I do like the idea of killing them in one shot with reinforcements. So if I lock it on this turn... It can't be right, right? I just gotta get him dead. 
If I had enough vigilance creatures. Um Like if the if the board was a little stalled and they had a couple blockers, I would just lock it on. But since we're getting in almost lethal, we might as well. There's our seven wins. All right, so we went to six and zero. Oh. We had a little scare there with two losses in a row, but we got there. The deck was awesome, and I'm gonna keep working on it. But I'm gonna end this video for now. So thanks for watching.